I mean, you can't really have too many running backs, right? Like, so generally speaking, regardless of what was going on with Zeke, it was a possibility that they would sign him. That being said, it seems pretty clear that whether Jerry Jones believes there's evidence of an assault or not, they're preparing for the possibility they are going to lose him for one or two games in this season. And if that's the case, yeah, you go get another running back. The question I'm going to have is I'm very curious because Ronnie Hillman's a decent running back. What's it going to look like with him in there? Because as good as Ezekiel Elliott is, Man, those are big holes. Those are some <laughs> big holes. Like, Roddy Hiltman has got to be like, I didn't know that life could be like this. <laughs> I would point out that it's really hard. It's really hard to use this signing to try and extrapolate and triangulate where we are in a legal matter that everyone, I think, reasonably agrees we don't know enough about. Do we know anything? That's the thing. Like, I am here to always be enlightened or try to be on issues of domestic violence. But we just don't know. And the only thing we can ask for in all of these scenarios is transparency and accountability. And this is not transparent. So I can criticize the Cowboys, the NFL, for not being transparent and forthcoming in terms of what is developing with Ezekiel Elliott. But at some level, it's just complicated. So the Ronnie Hillman thing speaks to me more about what you were saying, Bomani, the disposability of the running back, the disposability of what Le'Veon Bell was talking about when he said, I want to do some things to boost my own self and my profession because running backs are just that disposable. Yeah, but, see, but the other thing, though, I think we have to remember with Zeke is the question is, how, how are they going to stack up the other things that have happened in this offseason with him? Now, this happened last year. But to me, like the thing that we know about that I think is a bit jarring is watching him pull that woman's top down to that St. Patrick's Day parade. And that is something yes. that if you're the NFL, you cannot have. And to be honest, if you're the league and you talk what the league has talked about, their newfound enlightenment on these matters, that's in no questions asked suspension right there, right? Like, this is one of those that you do immediately on that, that there has to be a suspension there if they care in the ways that they claim to care. Because anybody this happens to in the league, this is bad for the PR, which is ultimately what they care about, not the principal. We don't even know if they'd be willing to do that. We have no idea what any of this is. We don't know if it's about simply the first incident or if it's about a stack of incidents. We don't know. And I will point out that one of the things NFL teams are very good at is not just, well, they're very bad at calculating what is the punishment that fits this crime from an ethical or moral level. What they're quite good at is calculating what is the risk that we could get into trouble for something else coming up. And Ezekiel Elliott, we don't know what happened in the past with the domestic violence stuff, but we know that things tend to happen around Ezekiel Elliott, and that may be just enough reason for an insurance well, policy. We also know the league is not looking to give a small punishment and then something else come out, and then they wind up in Ray Rice world again, which they say they learned from, but clearly have not. And one guy who is always looking at risk reward is, of course, Jerry Jones. We've discussed that here on this show. And He's I know just looking at reward. I don't even know if he looks at risk. <laughs> On ESPN this weekend, I believe we have a story featuring Jerry Jones where he talks about how he calculates that and how he comes up with his decisions.